Some things in life are just hard, but many things in life are made harder by poor choices that we make about how we choose to carry them out. Today I want to talk to you about a tool called decomplecting, which can help you avoid introducing more difficulty than is otherwise necessary into the tasks that make up your life. Plectere is a Latin verb that means to braid together, to intertwine things. So to complect means uh, to take separate things and braid them together, which is where our word complex comes from. So to decomplect is to take something which is complex, break it apart into its separate concerns, and then address those separate concerns individually so that we can do the minimum amount of work that is intrinsic to the task at hand. I'm borrowing this idea from a programming talk, actually, from the Clojure programming language, which is a treasure trove of great ideas if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the relevant talk. It's helpful to make a distinction up front between the intrinsic difficulty that arises from just the nature of a given task that you're trying to undertake and the incidental difficulty that is introduced by our choices about how we carry it out. By decomplecting the task, we make sure that we're only up against that intrinsic difficulty and we sidestep all those incidental challenges that can arise from poor choices. I actually use this all the time when I'm teaching mathematics because it's very often the case that you can separate out the logic from how you actually have to computationally carry out a problem. Here's my plan, I can lay out the steps, I can get that on paper, I can get that out of my working memory, and then as I'm actually executing the problem, I can just focus on computation, computation, computation without worrying about what am I doing, why was I doing it again, because it's all already sorted out. Whereas if you try to do both of those at once, you're trying to fit a lot of information into your working memory or context switching them, and you get all of these extra, extra challenges. But um, I don't want to force people to sit through a lot of mathematics that they're probably not interested in. So I've come up with a couple of examples from my life of where decomplecting really helped me out. As we're running through these examples, I have a little box down here separating out the intrinsic versus the incidental difficulties of the tasks and hopefully make it easy to follow what's going on. So the first practical example came about as I was helping my friend's uncle move. He's coming from Arizona back to California with an entire lifetime of stuff, including a full wood shop and armory. So there's a lot of heavy stuff to be moved. And this is in the middle of the summer, in central California. It's like 105 degrees outside. Uh, it's terrible. And because of that, we had set aside two days to get all of his stuff just unloaded into his house. So we set to it, you know, back the big moving van up to the garage, and we're all hopping up in there, grabbing a box, hopping back down, going into the house, finding somebody who knows where things go and getting directions. And after a while, it just kind of occurred to me like, this is crazy inefficient. Like there has to be a better way to do this. And so I just sort of stepped aside for a moment and thought about it and went, you know what? Why is anybody climbing up into this moving truck and then climbing back down we don't we don't ever have to do that uh if i just go stand in the truck and move things from the back of the truck to the edge of the truck then people can just grab stuff at a convenient chest height uh, and walk it into the house and nobody has to do any scrambling up and down which is great because we all have either bad knees or bad backs or both um and so you know i just said hey guys hey guys just check this out new plan new plan I'm going to stand in this truck. I'm going to, I'm going to scoot stuff to the edge for you guys. You guys just take it into the house. Life is going to be good. And once we figured out exactly what everybody was doing, it got to the point where I, as the guy taking stuff from the back of the truck to the edge of the truck, could actually keep four people in continuous motion. Because I'm just box from here to here, box from here to here, box from here to here. And they're just cycling through, grabbing stuff, taking it inside the house. And so... Though we had two days set aside to log all this crap everywhere, we actually finished it in four hours. We were done by 2 p.m. Uh, life was good. Uh, you know, we had beer and pizza. Uh, I got to be the hero of the day, and I still get cookies from them at Christmas. So let's break down this task. A box needs to get from the depths of the truck to the edge of the truck. Then it needs to get taken off of the truck. Then it needs to be taken into the house where folks are opening things up and sorting stuff out so there's three simple steps there move it to the edge take it off the truck take it into the house not a tremendous amount of work but there's incidental 
complexity that arises from naively trying to execute this task because each of us was going, there's my box. I'm going to climb into the truck. I'm going to grab that box. I'm going to bring it to the edge of the truck. Then I'm going to scramble down off of the edge of the truck, pick the box back up, and then take it into the house. And the up and down and up and down was actually the most exertion involved in the task in the naive way to approach it so by separating out those concerns and going it doesn't have to be the case that one person handles all three stages of this process we can just specialize and avoid ever having to jump up and down off of this truck we actually cut the amount of total effort that was going into this tremendously uh, it definitely would not have been sustainable for us to just continuously work for four hours and we would have been there for two days uh, if I hadn't stepped back and gone, do we really need to be going up and down on this truck? Uh, so, you know, the total number of up and down into the truck went from uh, two excess actions per box to, you know, I go up once, we do the whole load in the moving truck, I come down. Tremendous savings just from breaking it apart and going, what do we really need to do here? And can we separate those things in a way that saves us some labor? The second example that I want to talk you through is just a mundane chore in my life that I realized was harder than it needed to be. Um, I'm pretty good about doing laundry, about the actual washing and the drying of the laundry and bringing it back into my home in a reasonable amount of time. But then very often the bin of laundry just sort of sits in front of the closet and there seems to be a major jump in the degree of willingness I have to summon to put away laundry versus cleaning laundry. Uh, and that seemed a little disproportionate to me uh, because it's not a particularly hard task. But what I realized is I was taking my basket of laundry, putting it next to the closet, picking up an article of clothing, putting a hanger in it, and then going, where does this need to go in the closet? At which point I had a 50-50 shot because I have a big double doors sliding situation on the closet only one side of it's accessible at any given moment so 50 percent of the time i just got to put the item into the closet where it goes and 50 percent of the time i'd have to slide these double doors and that double door mechanism is the bane of my existence it's it's the worst thing in my life that's probably an exaggeration but it's not that far off uh, because it's a nightmare. It's like this eight foot tall mirror. This thing goes off the track and then I've got to wrestle it. Right. So I realized that that was the real issue. I was dreading having to slide this thing back and forth and just have to be hyper vigilant to make sure that it doesn't go off the track because the mechanism is at this point junk. I don't even know where you'd get one of those. Anyway, I realized this is an opportunity for a little decomplecting because I don't actually have to do all of those things in a linear sequence for each item. And so instead, what I did is I took my laundry basket and I took it to the other side of the room and then I would take out all of my items and put them on hangers. And then I would sort them according to what type of item it is. And then I would sort, do a second sort of all of my little piles into what goes in the left side of the closet, what goes in the right side of the closet. And at that point, pick up everything that goes in the left side of the closet and put it in the closet, slide the closet door one time, pick up everything that goes in the right side of the closet, put it in the closet and we're done. And I don't have to have an ongoing deep engagement with this closet door mechanism that drives me batty. So there, the intrinsic tasks to be executed for a given article of clothing was put it on the hanger, figure out where it needs to go in the closet, put it in the closet. The incidental task that's introduced, and the one that was the biggest pain in the butt, is sliding the closet door back and forth 50% of the time. You know, so if I have a load of laundry, 30 items, that means I'm going to slide this stupid door back and forth 15 times. Just no reason to be doing that, right? But if, if you don't think <laughs> about what it is that you're doing, if you don't think about how much of this work that I'm doing here... Uh, is necessary and how much of this is arising from the way that I'm choosing to do things, then it's very easy to end up in a, well, this is good enough and it's a simple task, so I'm not going to think about it uh, until you realize that it's time to do laundry again and you're 
last week's laundry is still actually sitting in front of the closet. So it's two examples of sort of mundane applications of this idea of decomplecting, where we take something that is braided together, we separate out the concerns so that we only have to address the intrinsic difficulty of the task, and we can skip out on all that incidental difficulty that arises when we make silly choices about how we do things. Uh, one addendum here. Uh, this is not the first time that I've shot this video, and the last time that I did it, I happened to be chatting with my grandmother shortly after I shot it, and I ran the idea by her, and I was like, what do you what do you think of this? And she's like, that, that's great. But my grandmother, gloriously lateral thinker that she is, uh, her comment was, have you thought about just taking the doors off the closet? Which is, first of all, no, I hadn't thought of that, even, even slightly. Um, one day I hope to to rival my grandmother and problem solving prowess, but we're not there yet. Um, and that's a great idea, although the logistics of it are going to be a bit of a nightmare, but it's definitely going to happen. And sometimes you can use a little bit of lateral thinking to solve a problem without having to actually separate out the concerns like this. So decomplecting, not the end all be all, it's just one small tool in the toolbox that can reduce the amount of time you're spending on incidental complexity in your life. So give it a shot. I think you'll find it makes it a little easier to be a happy human being.